the shoes of this orchestra are the best shoes in the world. <laughs> Usually musicians' shoes are a mess, but everyone here has perfect, beautiful <laughs> shoes, much better than mine. <laughs> See, mine are just old, but take a picture of their shoes, really, it's a treat. <laughs> insight as to what's going on it's uh, that's what you get when you watch symphony dot live that's for sure stuff that most audiences won't see is that is he showboating there? of course he is he's playing to the <laughs> playing totally to the camera isn't he? i mean he's he he is a, a, a quite an insular person actually yeah but switch the camera on and he performs i mean he he is show business he knows what to do he knows that if you've got a camera on and by the way not everybody is like this. No. And I've, I've spent many, many, many years of my life filming conductors who just will not play to the camera. And you don't want it to always be playing to the camera, you want them to be natural, but you're, you're never gonna get MTT doing that. He, he, he likes to perform and he wants, he knows that you need stuff and he's gonna give it to you. I mean, that stuff about the shoes, yeah. People love that stuff, don't they? Sure. Oh, well, yeah. Had a guy, I guess, really. Yeah, it's that. great. Yeah. It, but in your, in your experience, how important is it for you that a conductor has got a sense of humour that makes the, the rehearsals fun or, or not? Uh, I mean, we, we've, we've just been through a period of time in, 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 uh, in my orchestra that, of course, you've been playing in, where it's intense rehearsals. There's not a lot of laughs going on. It's actually about the music. And I have to say that that's just as pleasurable for me mm. as if you get somebody who comes in and makes it very light and they go, okay, don't worry, I'll see you tomorrow. You know this, I know <laughs> this, so it's, it will all be fine. Where do you, what do you prefer? Uh, I like this. I prefer absolutely this, but it depends also, again, on the conductor. If he works, like, really inspiring or if he's just funny. That is, you know, the, the difference. Mm. So, uh, like, like MTT, and then with this sense of humor and this empath empathy, yeah, yeah. empathy. Um, this is amazing because you kind of, you go in the flow um, in this, in this um, how do you say, yeah, in this uh, show he's doing, but on a very friendly way. It's not show for himself, it's show for everybody, and that's sure. what you can feel. As MTT said, a Czechish-like melody taken from the first movement of Schubert's Great Ninth Symphony. Is it great? I mean, it's called the Great. <laughs> there's also... No, there's not another great. There's a little. There's a little. Yes, <laughs> there's a little <laughs> and there's a great. And it yeah. is great. I, is it great? Oh, yeah. Why, I think do, why so. do you think it's great? Because there's, as I said, it's like it's a piece full of contradictions somehow. It just starts with two horns. It seems like the horns are coming from, from far away. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, that's also kind of very f like um, f folk stream, like folklore, yeah. uh, like like in, in a village, you know, the, the horns from, from somewhere, also like Mahler was using. And um, I like that because it's so intimate. And then um, the introduction starts like very slow, very... Yeah, intimate and 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 uh, in piano, and then immediately they're coming the strings with the trombones, which is also very new actually. Yeah. The trombones, and um, this um, this contrast is also very nice, and um, also the, all the motifs which uh, he is using, they're appearing again and again in different uh, tempi, and uh, this is I find very interesting and very rich somehow. I mean, I, I think one of, one of MTT's great qualities is, is, is his intelligence in programming. There's always interesting things going on. It might not be that you're necessarily aware of them, 
But there's, there's always something about the way, the way he puts programs together, I think is always masterful. He's been, he's been doing it for many, many years. He knows what to do with an audience. He knows how to program it and to time it, make it feel like it's a natural event, if you know what I mean. Absolutely. Um, and I think this is a good example of it. I mean, you know, the cynic in me would say, well, neither of them have got very much percussion in them, for example. So yes, that doesn't, that... you don't mean you wheel everything in for the first half and then wheel it out for the second half. No. It's been done like that. It's obviously... But some musicians would say that was a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for everybody at home, if you would like to watch the whole concert, then please do so on symphony.live. It's Michael Tilson Thomas conducting the Czech Philharmonic live from the Rudolfinum Hall in Prague. are they great artists, they're great athletes. Because just in the last movement of this symphony, there are, I don't know, 1,100 and something <laughs> bars. And I've tried to count the number of notes in the first violin part many times, but I haven't succeeded yet. <laughs> I lose count somewhere in the thousands. So not only are they great artists, they're great athletes, they're like marathon uh, <laughs> Olympiads, and you should be so proud of them. I'm thrilled to work with them, and thank you so much for your generous appreciation. Hannah, Tommy, thank you very, very much thank for joining me on this edition of Symphony Insiders. Please make sure that you join us next time. <laughs>